As we briefly discussed in the lecture on introduction to quantum mechanics, we said that quantum mechanics does not take the same approach in studying the behavior of microscopic and macroscopic objects. So in this lecture, we're going to discuss the statistical approach that is taken by quantum mechanics as well as the deterministic approach that is taken by classical physics. So classical physics takes on an approach known as the deterministic approach in studying the behavior of the motion of macroscopic as well as microscopic objects. It basically treats objects as if they were simple particles. So according to the deterministic theory, if we know a certain set of given quantities such as velocity and position and if we know all the forces involved that act on that object, we can readily determine the future position of that object. We can determine the pathway that our object takes. For example, in classical physics, if we let an object fall from a height of 10 meters from the bottom, from the surface of the Earth at a known initial time of, let's say, t equals zero seconds, and we neglect air resistance, we know the only force acting on that object is the force of gravity. So if we know the force is acting on the object, if we know the initial position as well as the initial velocity of that object, even if it's a macroscopic or microscopic object, we can determine the future pathway that our object will take. We can also determine the exact position and velocity of the object at any later time. So this is the approach that classical physics takes and it, and it is known as the deterministic approach. So quantum mechanics, however, takes a completely different approach on studying the behavior of macroscopic and microscopic objects. As we already saw in our discussion on the double slit experiment using electrons, there is absolutely no way in actually knowing the pathway that any one electron will take, nor is it possible to know exactly where that electron will end up. In fact, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle tells us that it is impossible to know precisely the position as well as the velocity, the momentum of any electron at any given moment in time. So instead of using the deterministic theory, the deterministic approach that classical physics uses, quantum mechanics uses a different theory known as the statistical theory. So even though we cannot know with exact certainty where any one electron will actually end up, we can describe the future position and velocity of an electron using probability. And this interpretation of macroscopic and microscopic objects is known as Copenhagen's interpretation. So basically it states that there is an inherent uncertainty in being able to predict the pathways and quantities that describe the motion of any object being a microscopic object or a macroscopic object. Now this uncertainty comes from the fact that ordinary objects do not simply behave as particles, but they can also behave as waves. According to quantum mechanics, since electrons are not simple particles, since they can also act as waves, they cannot follow any simple pathway that is predicted by the deterministic approach that classical physics takes. So basically, classical physics uses an approach known as a deterministic approach. So basically, classical physics assumes that all objects, being macroscopic or microscopic, are exact particles, are simple particles. So that basically means, if we know a certain set of quantities, initial quantities, as well as 
force, all the forces involved that act on that object, we can readily predict the future location and pathway of that object. On the other hand, quantum mechanics takes a statistical approach to studying the behavior of microscopic and macroscopic objects. Basically, it states that there exists an uncertainty in nature that comes from the wave-particle duality of matter. Matter does not always act as simple particles, but it can also act as waves. And as a result, there exists an uncertainty in being able to predict the pathway of any object, such as an electron.